Before we start our lesson for today, I am inviting all of you to join us in a magical learning experience at home. Enroll now at Vival's Happy Homeschool Program. You can find the details at the description part of this video. Hope to see you there! Learning science does not only come from books and the things around us. The most important key to learn science is through experiment. Hi everyone! Welcome to another episode of our Scientific Friday. I am Teacher Janelle and I'm on a journey again to understand the different things around us. Are you ready to join me for today's lesson? Come on! If we want to learn science through experiments, where should we conduct them? Correct! In a laboratory. Today, we are going to talk about common laboratory tools and equipment. In this topic, we will discover the following. What are the different laboratory tools and equipment that are commonly encountered in a science laboratory? What is a microscope? What are the different parts of a microscope? How can we observe proper discipline in handling these tools and equipment? Are you ready? Let's begin! For you to better remember, science laboratory tools are divided into five groups. Container tools, support tools, mixing tools, transferring tools, and heating tools. Container tools are specially made glassware used to contain, store, catch, transfer, and mix liquid and solid samples. They are made of heat-resistant materials or materials that are calibrated at a certain temperature in order to facilitate chemical reactions or changes. Here are some examples of container tools. Test tube, beaker, Erlenmeyer flask, volumetric flask, and graduated cylinder. However, test tubes and some volumetric flasks cannot be normally held by hand during experimentation that needs heating or mixing, which is why there are support tools. Support tools are used to hold glassware containers during heating or filtration process, since holding them by hand is dangerous. These tools are ring stand, test tube rock, test tube holder, tongs, clay triangle, and wire gauze. Let's move on to the mixing tools. These tools are used to mix and contain samples. They are made of glass or materials that are resistant to chemical reactions and heat. That's why just any plastic or metal cannot be used as a mixing tool in the science laboratory. We have steering rod, mortar and pestle, crucible, and evaporating dish as examples of mixing tools. There are also transferring tools that support the transfer of liquid from one container to another. And some of these tools are used to calibrate the exact measurement of substances to be mixed. These are pipette, dropper, and glass funnel. There are also heating tools. They are specifically made to create a single or controlled flame in order to spread it evenly. Some of these are Bunsen burner and hot plate. Let's not forget the measuring tools. These are used to measure temperature, weight, and mass. These are thermometer and triple beam balance. Aside from these tools, 
there is a special equipment used to observe tiny specimens that cannot be seen by the naked eye. This is the microscope. The commonly used microscope in a science laboratory is called a compound microscope. This microscope is with at least two object lenses that magnifies an object to make it appear at least 10 times larger. These objective lenses have different magnification levels and can be adjusted depending on the viewer's needs. It has major structural parts, namely head, base, and arm. The most important part of a microscope is its optical part located in the head structure because it is used to view, magnify, and produce a larger image. It consists of the following parts. Eyepiece. This is found on top of the microscope used to view the specimens. Its standard magnification is 10 times larger and has other varied magnifications from 5 times to 30 times larger. Eyepiece tube. It carries the eyepiece above the objective lens. Objective lenses. These lenses are used for specimen visualization. There are one to four objective lenses in a microscope with each lens having its own magnification power from 40 times to 100 times larger. Nose piece. It holds the objective lenses and it is movable. Thus, it can let the objective lenses to revolve depending on the preferred magnification power. The adjustment knob. These are used to focus the microscope. Stage. This is the part of the microscope where the specimen is placed for viewing. It has stage clips which holds the specimen slides in place and controls it from slipping when specimens are manually moved. Aperture. This is a hole on the microscope stage in which the light source transmits. Microscopic illuminator. This is the microscope's light source located at the base which captures light from the external source. Condenser. These are lenses under the stage next to the diaphragm of the microscope and are used to collect and focus light from the illuminator into the specimen. It ensures that sharp images are produced with a magnification of 400 times larger and above. Diaphragm It is an adjustable part found under the stage of the microscope that controls the amount of light that reaches the specimen. Rock stop it prevents the objective lenses from getting too close to the specimen slides, which may hit and cause damage to the specimen. Are you excited to do some science experiments in the laboratory someday? But wait! There are some general rules when going inside the science laboratory and how to handle the tools and equipment inside. First, Always wear a laboratory coat and glasses to protect your skin and eyes against accidental spill and irritation from harmful chemicals. Second, do not touch any tool or equipment unless told to do so. Laboratory tools and equipment are specially made, which is why they are costly. Manipulating tools and equipment on your own without teacher supervision might cause accident to you or damage to the tools and equipment. Third, always use the support tools when dealing with hot objects. Fourth, after using the tools and equipment, clean them properly and put it back to its place. 
Before we end our lesson for today, I am inviting you again to join us in a magical learning experience at home. Enroll now at Vival's Happy Homeschool Program. You can find the details at the description part of this video. Hope to see you there! I hope you learned a lot today and apply these learnings in your daily lives. Join me again for our next Scientific Friday and together, let us discover things around us. Because science is everywhere! I am Teacher Janelle for Teacher Vival. Goodbye everyone!